I want to read you a, just a quick preview. This is something that uh, will be shared Sunday morning at worship at Drennan. This is Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. This is uh, part of the Jesus birth story, and this is what happens right before it. You all are used to hearing John or Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20 at Christmas, and we'll certainly share that scripture this year at our candlelight service on Wednesday the 21st as well. But this is for you all, especially the ones that do not have a church home or have not thought about that in a while. Maybe you're not sure where you fit at a church. We do want you to come to our candlelight service on Wednesday the 21st. And one of the reasons we've said it then is so that folks don't feel pressured to upset the apple cart in your family about when uh, people get together. A lot of you get together on Christmas Eve night, and I know our family does, and we end up going to a, a church to worship. And since we don't have our candlelight here on Christmas Eve, we'll find one that we can. I would love for us to have it at Christmas Eve here, but I do understand why folks like to have it on a different night too. But this is the scripture leading to uh, Jesus being born, and this is the angel Gabriel speaking to Mary, his mother. And listen to the resolve she has and the obedience she has to what's going to happen. So this is Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. It said, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, Mary's older cousin, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who said was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. The, then the angel left her. And that last verse, 38, is the real crux of the matter to me. It says, I am the Lord's servant, period. May your word to me be fulfilled, period. Mary, who's a young girl, they think probably in the, her mid-teens, said, I belong to you, God, and what you want, I want to have happen too. And that's the way we need to be with him because we live in a time and in a world where we worship ourselves and we worship our achievements, our prestige, our accomplishments, our status, our socioeconomic status, and those things add up to nothing. They add up to absolutely nothing. And I know that a lot of you at Christmas time become reflective. You think about what is my purpose? Why am I here? Is there a God? What's that mean? Why do we celebrate the birth of this man, Jesus? This is why. Because it is God's will that this came to be. He is ruler and creator over this world. And he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to be our Lord and Savior. Our Savior from our sins to redeem us. And with that, he is to be our Lord. And that is quite a strange concept in this day and age because, again, we live 
as little mini lords, especially when we have something like what I'm using right now, social media. We think we are our own TV program that everybody wants to tune into to see what we've had for dinner or what kind of brews we have on our heel or what our hair looks like today or what kind of way that we can gussy ourselves up with filters on our phones to look a different way to have our own airbrushed TV program. But it says right here in this book, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Come see us at our chapel. If you're going to another chapel that's closer by or that you know folks there, do it. Be sure that they're teaching from this. If they're not, Wipe the dust from your feet and find one that is. We meet here Sunday mornings at 11. And like I said, our candlelight Christmas service this year will be Wednesday night, the 21st, 7 p.m. Just come on in. There's no dress code here. You come as you are, as we think Jesus would probably prefer. We'll see you.